In the last month, I've been taking the Super Blast for long runs, tempo runs, and even raced a marathon. This shoe has been one of my favorite speedy long run shoes, and it's time to talk about it after 100 miles. And yes, we'll also talk about the price. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the ASICS Super Blast after 100 miles. But before I get into my thoughts on that, I do wanna go over some disclosures and there is a lot. This is not only a shoe that ASICS sent me for the purpose of review, but I'm also part of the promotional materials. I don't know if this paper comes in all the Super Blast shoes that are sold, but at least the one that they sent for me, I'm in the marketing materials. So there's a lot of opportunities for bias here, although I did not get paid to have my name put in any of these marketing materials, so for whatever that's worth. And they've never paid me to either wear the shoe, use the shoe, or to promote this shoe. And in fact, when I raced the marathon in them last weekend, it's not something that they asked me to do or paid me to do. However, I have done a lot of promotional work for ASICS in the past. I'm also gonna compare the Super Blast to a bunch of other shoes, and I'll go over some of the relationships that I had with those brands as well as I go through it in this video. But regardless of whose shoe I'm talking about, no point has anyone paid me to make this video or to use any of these shoes, and no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So there is a lot of disclosures out there for this video, but now that it's done, let's talk about the Super Blast after 100 miles. So when I do a 100 mile video, I like to talk about two things, how I've been using the shoe in case that's changed over time. And with this shoe, it kind of has a little bit and how the shoe's holding up after the wear and tear of those 100 miles. So first let's talk about how I've been using it. So even though this has a super thick stack height of FF Turbo, which is ASICS racing foam, and it also then has a layer of FF Blast Plus, which is ASICS best daily training foam, like what you see in the Nova Blast. Uh, this is a shoe that I've been using, not necessarily for my speediest runs, but for my kind of longest slash speedy run. So for me, that means marathon effort. That's where I absolutely love the shoe. I've taken it for some tempo runs and it does pretty good there, but I really think that this shoe does the best at that marathon effort and maybe even pulled back a little bit from that. So not necessarily your recovery runs, actually pretty much Definitely not recovery runs for me and not my easy runs or not even my like easy plus runs. I really like it at that marathon effort pace. For me, that's where I kind of like the shoe gets along the best with me and I feel like I'm getting really a lot out of it and not paying any penalties in terms of either size, weight, bulk, or lack of having a carbon fiber plate. So when I took this shoe out for racing the California International Marathon last weekend, I felt like it was a really great shoe for me to have. For the most part, I really felt like I was just in a really comfortable, but yet somehow speedy shoe. There was only a couple of points where I really felt like mentally I was struggling and I really wished I could have had some carbon there, something a little bit more aggressive to kind of like help dig me out of the depths of uh, my marathon despair. But for the most part, this shoe was a fantastic shoe to have on. Plus, for those of you who are looking for a little bit more stability in your speed day shoes and those speed long run shoes, this is a shoe that definitely is going to work for you because it has a very wide platform, but because of that kind of thick layer of FF Blast Plus that's on the bottom here, that helps make the shoe kind of get a little bit less squirrely underfoot every time your foot hits the ground. So like it kind of mellows out the FF Turbo in terms of stability. I also think for those of you who are looking for a marathon shoe and you're as concerned about comfort as you are carbon, I think going with a shoe like the Super Blast is going to be a very compelling option for you guys as well. One of the things that I could say is that the shape of the toe box in this shoe was really nice. 
and the overall kind of just comfort of the shoe, even though it is a fast marathon shoe, the comfort of this shoe has me feeling really good, even though I'm just a handful of days out from running a 304 marathon, which wasn't my fastest marathon ever, but definitely a very hard effort for me. For most people, what I'm gonna recommend is that you're using it as your marathon training companion. Not necessarily your race shoe, but that companion shoe, the one that you pull out for those tough, really long workouts. And for me, like the ideal kind of like scenario for the shoe is, it's Sunday morning, you've got a 16 mile, maybe an 18 mile run, three mile warm up, 10 miles at marathon effort, three mile cool down. Super Blast is a shoe that you are going to want. Because not only is it gonna help you hit those paces, but you do this run on a Sunday, you're gonna be ready Tuesday or Wednesday to hit another threshold tempo session, and you're gonna be ready to keep that training cycle rolling. So you're gonna be able to do the workout and then recover quickly for that next session. Make sense? All right, so now let's talk about how it's been holding up, and I'm actually really surprised at how well it's holding up. Uh, just the way that this outsole is kind of set up, I was pretty much sure that there was gonna be a lot of those like chunks taken out of this FF Blast Plus, but it's actually doing really well and the rubber is holding up really well too. Uh, some of my highest wear areas I'm only seeing but the faintest amounts of kind of like scuffing and wear that's happening both here on the outer part of the heel and right here in kind of like this trampoline pod type area. I gotta get really close with that macro lens for me to be even be able to see the kind of wear that's happening. It is happening just a little bit, but this rubber on the outsole is holding them actually better than the rubber outsole that's on my Novo Blast 3s. So I feel like wear and tear wise, it's doing really well. One note though, all these like little crevices in the outsole, they are rock magnets. So I've been doing a lot of my training uh, on my marathon sessions on softer surfaces now, kind of like crushed limestone, like a hard packed trail. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm picking rocks out of all these after every single session. So that is, kind of like a downside of the way that this owl sole is set up. Moving to the upper, this is doing really well and kind of like almost too well. This material, it's like really scratchy and it's like very thick. It's almost kind of like they took like a racing upper and put like a rain coating on it and not like a good Gore-Tex one, but like a cheap rain coat type of coating on it. It actually worked out to my benefit at CIM because it was raining for most of the morning and then once the race started, the rain stopped, but the roads were still wet. And so traction was good. And in terms of keeping water out, it was good, but this isn't the most comfortable upper. And so like for something that kind of costs in this range is gonna be used for really tough, important sessions, I kind of want something that's a little bit nicer than this. Just doesn't seem, it's getting the job done, but it just doesn't seem nice. All right, now let's talk about the thing that I feel like everyone wants to talk about when it comes to this shoe. It's the price. It's 220 bucks. I said it when the shoe first came out, it's not cheap. I wish it were cheaper, it isn't. I think the ideal price for this, having now logged 100 miles in this shoe, is probably like 195 would be great. 200 is all right, 195 would be better. 185 would be even better, but I feel like 185 might be underpricing it. And to kind of prove my point, let's play a game. I'm gonna call it, is it overpriced? Now I'm gonna take two different training companions, shoes that I think should be used the same way that the Super Blast should be used from I think five other brands, and we're gonna compare their training companion versus ASIC's training companion, the Super Blast, and we're gonna see which one is overpriced. So first, let's take a look at Adidas. And I feel like this is probably the most interesting one for me because I feel like with Adidas, they've got the Adios Pro 3, which is their carbon-plated racer that comes in at 250. But the shoe that I think is more like the Super Blast in the Adidas lineup is the Prime X. And the Prime X, I have version one over here, and is one of my favorite shoes, probably, ever. It's quirky, it's weird, it's a little bit heavy, it's too tall to be legal for road racing, just like the Super Blast, but it's just really great at marathon effort, and it doesn't like threshold pace, and it doesn't really work because it's unstable, it's a very narrow in the heel and in the midfoot, it doesn't really like easy paces or recovery paces either. So, like, on paper, the descriptions are just about the same, and the new version of this, the Prime X Strong, comes in at $300, so $80 more. So at $300 for the Prime X, or Prime X Strong, and $220, which one is overpriced? I'd say maybe the Prime X and the Prime X Strong at $300 is a bit overpriced, but both of them kind of like, in terms of the differences in performance, 
I feel like the Super Blast might be a little bit underpriced relative to 300 if you think 300 is right, or if you think 220 is right for the Super Blast, 300 is definitely a little bit overpriced. So these are two very similar use case type shoes and they're both really exciting ones that are kind of favorites of mine. And I feel like the pricing is just really expensive for both of these. So like nobody wins. They're both overpriced. Let's say that. All right, next let's go to Saucony. So Saucony has the Endorphin Pro 3, which I raced the Chicago Marathon in earlier this year. Uh, and in terms of, oh, before I forget, in terms of uh, potential bias with Adidas, uh, I do very little with Adidas. In fact, Adidas kind of seems to go out of their way to treat me poorly sometimes. Uh, I'm trying not to hold it against them. Uh, I buy most of the Adidas shoes that I get myself and that pair of Primex that I bought. Uh, I have, I bought that one myself. All right, let's next move to Saucony. Saucony sometimes, in terms of disclosures, uh, works well with me. Uh, for the Endorphin Pro 2 series, they sent me the entire line of the Endorphin shoes and a bunch of other shoes that year. Uh, this year for all of the Endorphin Pro 3, I don't think Saucony has sent me a single shoe this year at all. So the Endorphin Pro 3 is $225 and the Speed 3, which I think is probably like the closest companion to the Super Blast. At $170, the Endorphin Speed 3 definitely feels like the better value than the $220 of the Super Blast, but I don't love marathon pace quite as much in the Endorphin Speed 3. I kind of like going faster in it. And the Endorphin Speed 3 doesn't always quite agree with my foot strike, so I do find myself enjoying the Super Blast a little bit more. For most of you though, I think I'm gonna say that the Endorphin Speed 3 is the better value of these two. Next, let's go to New Balance. And as far as disclosures goes, I just got back from running the New York City Marathon on a New Balance bib. They sent me a bunch of gear to get ready and to run the race. They customized a singlet for me. They gave me a pair of SC Elite 3s, more version 4s, New York City edition. And the Super Comp Trainer came as one of two rounds of shoes that New Balance sent. Again, this is one that lines up really nicely against the Super Blast because this is also above 40 millimeters of stack height. It's got a racing foam that's in here, fuel cell, and it also has a carbon fiber plate, even though the Super Blast doesn't have a carbon fiber plate. Now, the SC Elite, the racing shoe that I raced in New York in this year, that shoe comes in at $250. The SC Trainer, comes in at $180 versus the $220 of the Super Blast. So it feels like the SC Trainer kind of like makes a little bit more sense, but like anywhere that I would want to use the SC Trainer, if the Super Blast is an option, I'm gonna reach for the Super Blast. So for this one, I'm gonna say that the SC Trainer is the overpriced one because for $40 more, I could have a Super Blast and I think that I'd pay the $40 more for the Super Blast. All right, next let's go to Hoka. This one's kind of not fair because like Hoka hasn't had a marathon racing shoe that I've loved. So I'm gonna talk about the Carbon X3, even though both the Carbon X3 and the Rocket X are both $200. So at, if this is priced correctly at $200 and the Super Blast is $220, which one is overpriced? I think that's easy. I think the Carbon X3 is the overpriced of the two. Now last, let's talk about the Super Blast versus the Nike offerings. And I don't have any in the studio anymore because it's been a while since I've had any of the Nike race shoes. As far as disclosures with Nike goes, we did a lot of work together back in the day. I remember being one of the first people to get a pair of Peg Turbos, that was version one. And I also ran the 2019 Chicago Marathon on a Nike bib. They set me up with a training program. We ran with a team. We met together once a week. It was pretty cool, but it gets a little bit complicated because I don't think that there's like a direct competitor to the Super Blast in the Nike lineup. The Zoom Fly, we're not going to talk about the Zoom Fly. Uh, and the Tempo Next Percent, I, I don't think that's it. And I think that's an easy one because the Tempo Next Percent retailed at 200 bucks and that stiff React foam in the back, I don't think it's even close. I don't think anyone wanted to be in that shoe at $200. You could still find some on sale now for like $140, but at $140, I still don't want that shoe, uh, even if I have to pay $80 more to get the Super Blast. So let's talk about it in a little bit more interesting of a way, because Nike has two really good race options. They have the Alpha Fly 2 and the Vaporfly Next Percent. So I think that the Next Percent retails for $250, but I think that in some places you can find it for as low as $175. So, if I'm comparing a 175 Vaporfly Next Percent versus the Super Blast for the purpose of that weekend long run shoe, not necessarily talking about racing, but for the use case that the Super Blast is 
ideally suited for, kind of like what you would use a Prime X for. I think that the 175 next percent might be the better value, and then that would mean that the Super Blast is overpriced. Plus, there's the idea that you could still race very well in the Vaporfly next percent. So again, that's not necessarily something that I would recommend for everybody to do in the Super Blast. So in this case, Nike wins with the Vaporfly next percent if you can get it at that 175. At 250, it's closer, and I would say probably both are appropriately priced because is the Super Blast worth $30 less than an X percent? I'd say that's getting really, really close there if you're looking for a weekend long run trainer that you're going to be able to recover quickly for the next week's session. Another place where it gets really interesting is not with the Alpha Fly 2 because that's 275 bucks. And if that's correct at 275 bucks, then I think the Super Blast is also correct at 220. But you can also look at the Alpha Fly 1 because there's some of those available. Now that also retailed at 275, but if you can find them, the Alpha Fly 1 comes in at $200. So at $200, if you can get an Alpha Fly 1, I would rather run in that on the weekend, I think, than running in the Super Blast at 220. So in the Alpha Fly 1 versus the Super Blast, I think the Super Blast is the overpriced option, but Good luck finding an Alpha Fly 1 in your size. I can't find it in my size 9 anywhere. So if you are a lot smaller or a lot bigger than that size, you might be able to lock in that $200 price. I can't seem to find it anywhere. So in that situation, I think there's two times where Nike outvalues the Super Blast in terms of what the Super Blast is trying to do. So that is my five-way comparison and six or seven shoe comparison of whether the Super Blast is overpriced. So hopefully that gives you guys a little bit more context in terms of where I think this shoe fits in terms of its performance and what it can really do. Now, I think the other thing to talk about in that conversation is that not everyone wants to buy a carbon plated racer and then a high end training companion. Then I think that like just this whole training companion discussion isn't all that relevant to you kind of at all. But for those of you who are looking for that one-two punch of really fast carbon for race day and then something a little bit more mellow and a little bit more kind of like comfort oriented so you could recover faster during the middle of your marathon training block, I feel like there's a lot of interesting options that are out there. There's a lot of ways you can kind of slice them and dice them depending on what you like. I'm a big fan of the Super Blast, but it sure would make this video a lot easier to make if it were like 195 bucks. Those are my thoughts on the Super Blast after 100 miles. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or if you have critiques, I'm sure you've already written those in the comments already. If you have any other things that you wanna talk about, you can feel free to come to the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?